Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful to all of our musicians this morning. Even though we have to sing behind a plexiglass, it's nice to have you. It's nice to see all of you who braved the elements, you might say, braved the obstacles to come and be in person live. And to those that are watching online, I'm glad you're here as well. The scripture passage I would like to share with you today comes from Deuteronomy. I'll be reading from the 32nd chapter, verses 44 through 50, before I jump to the 34th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Hear the word of the Lord. Moses came and recited all the words of this song in the hearing of the people, he and Joshua, son of Nun. When Moses had finished reciting all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all the words I am giving in witness against you today. Give them as a command to your children so that they may diligently observe all the words of this law. This is no trifling matter for you, but rather your very life. Through it you may live long in the land that you are crossing over the Jordan to possess. On that very day the Lord addressed Moses as follows. Ascend this mountain of the Arabim, Mount Nebo, which is in the, in the land of Moab across from Jericho. And view the land of Canaan, which I am giving the Israelites for a possession. You shall die there on the mountain that you ascend and shall be gathered to your kin. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, and the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his sight was unimpaired and his vigor not abated. This is a word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So my husband Tom is always singing. Tom's here today. He's probably sad that he's got his mask on and can't be up there singing and tapping his toes with a musician, but he's always singing. And some of you may have heard me say that life with Tom is like being stuck in a Broadway musical. One minute, he's singing something from My Fair Lady, and then the other breath, he's belting out a tune from South Pacific. In ordinary times, this habit of his is winsome and even endearing. But it has been difficult, this habit of his, when I have worked at home, sheltered in place, trying to write a prayer or to record a Bible study or to video a children's sermon or to attend a Zoom meeting with my colleagues because these tunes get stuck in my head. I will be trying again to write a prayer and I'll be thinking I could have danced all night or... <laughs> some enchanted evening, these will be echoing inside my mind. And I think Moses must have had this same problem of getting words stuck in his head because in the book of Deuteronomy we find repeated refrains. Moses reiterates, probably sounding like a broken record to those Israelites, he repeats over and over, Obey and you will be blessed. Disobey and you will be cursed. Keep God's command and not only will you thrive, but also your household, your community, even all of creation will reap the benefits. We read today in today's scripture a reference to Moses' farewell address. 
In this final speech, he reminds the children of Israel gathered there on the plains of Moab, poised to enter the promised land of what God expects from God's chosen people, to execute justice for the orphan, to execute justice for the widow, to refrain from showing partiality in the courts, to take no bribes, and to love the stranger and the resident alien as they love themselves. Once again, he instructs the Israelites how they are to live by giving them all of the statutes they are to observe before they enter the land. Here in the final chapters of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses recites a song, a song of blessings and curses to the people. Now, I am not going to sing this song to you, it is all of chapter 32. You may read it yourself. The lyrics are there. But suffice it to say that the first verse of this song is one of praise to God, creator and sustainer. And it is a similar song of gratitude that I hope you will hear as my own refrain today. I am grateful to God for the many blessings that God has bestowed upon me here at serving at Marietta First United Methodist Church. I have enjoyed working with a loyal, and loving, and dedicated staff, and I have been so very fortunate and honored to teach and to preach, to pray and to marry and to bury, to serve communion and to assist in baptisms, all in the context of singing praises to God our King in this great assembly. And I am grateful to you, for you have trusted me to be your pastor and to be your friend. You have opened your hearts to me, you have opened your homes to me, and we have broken bread together at Sunday school parties and at UMW events and at holiday gatherings, even at a socially distanced backyard wedding back in April. You have allowed me to minister to you, whether it is in the hospital at the bedside or in the cemetery at the graveside, and I am deeply humbled and exceedingly grateful for the opportunities that you have given me to minister. In this passage of scripture, Moses has come to the end of his ministry, and he sings his final swan song, his last refrain. He is, dedicated, he is directed to God to climb Mount Nebo to gaze into the promised land before he dies. And I can relate to Moses and all his trekking, and I dare say, perhaps along with Lois Morrison, who we celebrated and sang a happy 100th birthday song earlier in the service, I hope that I am in as good a shape as Moses when I'm 120 years old. Moses is probably this fit because God has directed him to climb so many mountains during his ministry. And I live on top of a mountain, or so it seems. My address is not Mount Nebo, but my address is Mount Wilkinson. And since the gyms have been closed while we have sheltered in place due to the coronavirus, I have resorted to walking in my hilly neighborhood for exercise. Unlike Moses, I have had my phone and I have had my earbuds. And the other day when I was making my way up Mount Wilkinson, I was wondering... What song or songs might Moses have been humming in his mind as he made his way up Mount Nebo? And just then, the song titled, Thanks for the Memory, popped into my head. If you are under 50 and you do not know the song, Google it. It is the signature theme, uh, the theme song of renowned entertainer and comedian Bob Hope. Throughout his long career, many verses have been added to this song to fit the numerous occasions in his long and illustrious career. But originally, the song was sung as a duet between Bob Hope and Shirley Ross in a film, um, I think it's called The, the Big Broadcast of 1938. And they played a couple reminiscing after an amicable divorce. As they reflect on their relationship, they remember. And as they remember, they realize that in fact there is still a lot of love 
that lingers between them. Perhaps Moses felt the same way as he climbed Mount Nebo. I'm sure there were a few times in his career that Moses would have preferred an amicable separation from the children of Israel because unlike any of you, they were rebellious and quarrelsome. And if you recall, he has journeyed with them for 40 years through the wilderness. And throughout his ministry, Moses has been faithful to these stubborn and stiff-necked people. He has given them the law, and he has encouraged them to keep covenant, continually reminding them that the law was somewhat like a wedding ring, an outward and visible sign of their commitment to God. Moses has administered this law. He has listened to their grumblings, he has heard their grievances, and he has settled their disputes. Much like in a marriage, Moses has been in a committed relationship with the children of Israel. Ministry and marriage have much in common, for both are covenants before God to maintain and to nurture a loving relationship. Compared to Moses, my time in ministry here at Marietta has been relatively short. You have loved me so well. In fact, I feel like we're still in the honeymoon phase. But I am grieving. I am grieving the separation that has occurred through, as a result of this pandemic, the sheltering in place and staying apart from each other. And I also grieve the separation that due to my family's situation, I am forced to make suspending my ministry. In spite of all this, please know that I'm very grateful for the loving relationship that we have had over these last five years. And I want to say thanks for the memories. The Song of Moses is filled with admonitions not to forget. Moses appeals to the nation of Israel to remember with gratitude because having a grateful spirit is so crucial in serving the Lord. Please know that I will remember with thanksgiving and I will not forget the enriching times that we have had together. The senior adult luncheons, the day trips and the overnight retreats as well as both the local outreach opportunities and the global mission trips that we have taken together. We have learned a lot together. Everything from laughter, yoga, to how to make better use of our smartphones. In the weeks and months to come, you will have new partners in ministry with Amber Lee, with Chad, and now with Forrest Kate in his new role. And I urge you to love them as you have loved me and to remember this advice. It is what I share every time I counsel with a bride and groom because this is, advice is as applicable to ministry as it is to marriage. You will have a long and happy relationship if you remember these three phrases. And they are yes, thank you, and please forgive me. By striving to find ways to say yes, you show that you are supportive. And in articulating the phrase thank you, you show that you are appreciative. And by being quick to say I am sorry, please forgive me, you indicate that you are reflective and willing to consider how you might have offended. I am very grateful for the ways in which you have truly been the perfect partners in ministry. You have always affirmed me by saying yes to any and every program suggestion, to any road trip or fellowship opportunity that I have offered. And you have repeatedly thanked me with calls and notes and cards and emails and with gifts of your generosity, showing me your appreciation and now I must say, forgive me for prematurely breaking covenant that we have mutually enjoyed and for going in another direction at this time. 
much like with Moses and the Israelites, my time with you is coming to an end. And much like Moses, I have had many mountaintop experiences while serving here at Marietta First United Methodist Church. And one of them was leading a trip to the Holy Land back in February. In fact, you're going to see some footage filmed atop Mount Nebo, located in present-day Jordan. Before returning to the United States, some of us extended our trip to include three days in Jordan, and we were able to visit Mount Nebo and to look back west over Israel. It was a bit cloudy, and I'm not certain that we had the grand vista that Moses had from Dan to the Negev. But in this moment, I can certainly empathize with Moses as he stood there on Mount Nebo. The usage of this metaphor is not original with me, of course, for the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. employed it in Memphis, Tennessee on the night before he was killed when he said, I have been to the mountaintop. But he implied that like Moses, he may not be able to enter the promised land. Likewise, there are places where I will not accompany you. I will not accompany you back into the church building as the doors are reopened for in-person worship. But I pray for your safety and well-being as you resume worshiping together in this place. I will not join you as you re-enter the sanctuary to hear the new organ. But I recall that Moses made a comeback A cameo appearance with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. So perhaps I can return at least to hear the inaugural concert featuring Brian Parks on the new organ. Mountaintop experiences give us a bird's eye view, a grand and glorious view, and they are majestic and awe-inspiring. During his life, Moses was blessed with many mountaintop experiences to be sure. But on top of Mount Nebo, gazing into the promised land, I cannot help but think that Moses was a bit sad. I wonder if he was even singing at all. I imagine that he was disappointed that he was not going on with the people of Israel. Atop Mount Nebo, there is an active church built on the ruins of a 6th century monastery. I'd like to draw your attention to the lovely tile floors and use their imagery to express my own disappointment and even regret that I will be not going on with you in the task of helping this beloved community at Marietta First United Methodist Church to be more welcoming to people of color. As an ordained deacon in the United Methodist Church, my calling is one of compassion and justice to connect the church with the needs of the world. And I ask you to forgive me for not putting more emphasis on the vital work of bridging the racial divide. With God's help, I pray you will invest yourselves in this work of hospitality and justice, even in my absence. Because just as you see here, on the exquisite mosaic tile floor which adorns the area around the baptismal font, The black, the white, the brown, the yellow, and the red tiles together make beautiful patterns, not only pleasing to the human eye, but also pleasing to the heart of God. Back there on the plains of Moab, Moses left it to the Israelites to choose how they would live in the land. Would their choice result in blessings or curses? Would they choose to abide by the will of God spelled out in the law? Would they adhere to what the Lord requires? To seek justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. Obedience to the divine statutes serves God's purposes of life, stability, and the flourishing both of individuals and communities. And according to 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 Deuteronomy, every generation must, must pledge allegiance and to promise anew to live as God's people, to follow the divine objective, and to observe God's law. Someone once said, it is never too late to do the right thing. 
I don't know about you, but I choose life over death. I choose love over hate. And I choose to sing the song that is ringing in my head. Yes, Lord, yes. By your will and by your way. Yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. And when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be, yes, Lord, yes.